this is one of the juiciest topics that I want to address with you today. Me and my boss. Many movies have been made about that topic and they're all very dramatic because the boss, when you say the boss, what images do you have in your mind? What emotions? Oh, my boss is friendly, my boss is cute. No, when you normally say the boss is here, people go like this, right? It's an emotion of, oh my God, the boss is here, which means negative, evil, big, cannot be spoken back to. That's the average emotional reaction to the boss. Let's take a huge step back here. The fact is this, there is always two players involved. There is you and the boss. First thing we need to understand is this. Never mind what the boss is saying or doing right now. The first thing we need to realize is who are you in this game? Are you more victim, more villain, more hero or more mature? Many people always start complaining about the boss and the moment you hear somebody complaining about the boss is doing this to me or the boss is doing that to me, before you go and analyze the boss, you better look at the person doing the complaining. They're having an observation. The observation can be true, it can be not true. However, the first thing is that between the victim, the villain and the hero, there will always be something called a mutual seduction. Let's analyze this real fast. Some people are victims and behave like victims, okay? So, normally a victim will say yes to everything and agree to everything because saying no is not part of what they could possibly do. So here you have the victim saying yes and the victim will say something very important. They will not say yes, I will do it. Yes, I will try. And here's a big secret for us. Language means something. The moment you hear yourself say, yes, I will try, you've set yourself up for failure. Why is that the case? Try is not a decision-making word. A person can either say yes or no to something, which means this, our brain is a computer. It's binary, it's zeros or ones. Problem with the victim is they want to play it safe, agreed? And so saying no, 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 I cannot say no, that's impossible for a victim. Saying yes is dangerous because you might just have to deliver and you're too afraid to do it. Try safe. So the boss says, Jimmy, right? You come to the boss and maybe the boss has a good idea for you Monday morning and says, I want Jimmy to work less. So actually, I want Jimmy to send this computer program, say you're a programmer, to the guys in Penang and let the guys in Penang program the program and then you have more time to do your job. That's a good idea, right? Boss wakes up, says, great idea for Jimmy, go to the office Monday morning and he says, Jimmy, and you're a Jimmy. It's Monday morning. You hear your boss's voice. The program starts running. Uh, could it be that the boss wants to promote you? Well, it could be, but no, 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 that's not possible. Could it be the boss wants to offer you more money, salary increase? Well, actually it could be, but in your mind, no, 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 no. What leaves what? It leaves, oh my God, I'm gonna get scolded or more work. Oh, those are very likely. That's just very, very likely, right? So this moment, your brain stops functioning and you're gonna go into excuse overdrive. If the boss says this, I have to say that. If he says that, I say this. Oh my God. So you go to the boss and your brain is full of excuses. The boss says, Jimmy, yes boss, you know, I want you to send this computer program to Penang so you've got less stuff to do. At this moment, the only thing you hear is just another job. Remember, it's either scolding or more work. And then the only safe thing in your mind to say, boss, I try, because you just want to leave the boss at this moment in time. You just want to leave the same room. So the boss has heard you say try. In his head, he heard yes. So Jimmy, send it by tomorrow morning to Penang, and then you've got more time to do your job. So in the boss's mind, he's giving you a great message. In your mind, you just heard more work, and you said, I try. You leave the office, Whew, that was a close one. You leave, Ooh, adrenaline goes down. What happens next is you forgot. Next morning, the boss comes in, being helpful and happy, says, Jimmy, did you send the thing to Penang, the program, for you to have more time? Program? Uh, what program? Jimmy, the program. I told you to send the program to Penang for these guys to work on it. Did you send it or not? <gasps> uh, of course, he can see your body language and he realizes you haven't done it. So what has happened? The boss meant really well to help you. In your case, you were in victim mode, got completely caught up in your fears and couldn't listen. 
and said the try word. The boss heard, yes, he didn't hear try. Then he starts shouting at you. You have now seduced him to be angry with you. Because what he's thinking, I'm trying to help this guy and he's not even helping himself. You have seduced him to become angry. At that point, you're like, I never said yes, I, I said I try. That means who's right, who's wrong? Both of you are fools because you've not made an agreement. At that moment, the boss gets angry because ah, these people always try to help them, then what? And then you are hurt and you will go to the company here and say the boss is evil because you know what? I didn't say yes and I have so much work to do and then he's now angry with me. That's not fair. What has happened is this. The problem is still in the room. You have seduced each other to be angry and sad and nothing got solved. First little hint from now on. Check your own language to make an agreement and that's the only way it works between people. You can say yes to something or no to something. If it's no, agree why not, maybe there's a new solution. If it is a yes, make a specific timeline agreement by when you agree to deliver something. It's called factual conversation. This is the control that you have over the situation. The problem is with a try is the following. Let's test it when you get married. You are very much in love with this beautiful woman or this gorgeous hunk of a man and you're going to get married and the justice of peace says, Martin, do you choose to take Martina for your lawful wedded wife until death do you part? And your answer is, I try. What's the fact? Are you married or not? No, you're not married and Martina might slap you. Keep that in your mind from now on. Success is first of all, based on clear agreements. Now that you know that you are communicating factually, very factually, it is time for you to observe your boss and go, I know exactly what I'm saying. I've communicated based on facts, on specific timelines and specific content. Then you will realize that actually about 70% of most of the misunderstandings evaporate because many of the fights we have in the office are based on not having a factual conversation. Then you can still have the jerky villain boss. He can still be a jerk. Why not? It happens. At that moment in time, if you know that you have become very mature and this person is still not able to handle facts, it's a big world. One solution is to say, you know what? I am really good at what I do and there's something called a headhunter and I'm not married to the company. Means you might as well leave once you know that you've done the right thing and are very clear. Second option, create informal contacts up there and that's what we're going to be talking about next. How do you navigate in an office when you have formal power and informal power? See you next time. Thank you.